hello friends welcome back to see fail academy uh, for another video so today's uh, topic is uh, uh, sorting algorithms probably one of the basic uh, you know items in terms of uh, computing or computer science so uh, we so let's go ahead and discuss a bit about the uh, sorting algorithms so let's get started so in this video these are the items that uh, we will cover so initially we will uh, look at what the sorting problem is which means we will uh, just uh, see what is the input to the sorting algorithm and what is the output how do we create what is the expected sorted output then we will start a little bit on a very important concept in terms of analyzing algorithms uh, which is uh, the concept of computational complexity we'll go through the overview uh, a bit I'll give you a little bit of hint on how do we compute complexities for you know simple um, algorithms having single or double loops mm. then we will see uh, the same thing uh, basically how to how to compute the complexity using a couple of examples uh, we will then move on to the uh, classification criteria based on which we can classify the most popular or important sorting algorithms and and a point to uh, note here is we probably won't cover the complex sorting algorithms we will just cover the very most popular ones or the simple ones from the from the context of uh, you know undergraduate uh, computer science so um, so then we will go to the most important slide probably or the most important part of the video where we will see the popular sorting algorithms that are there and uh, how and the comparison of those uh, sorting algorithms based on the classification criteria we have uh, we will not go into the details of each of the sorting algorithm i have uh, you know uh, planned a bunch of videos in fact for each sorting algorithm we will have a separate video with a detailed example so here we'll just do a comparison between them and see you know how they differ or how they are similar to each other then we will go to a little bit of basic idea or intuitive you know strategy behind these sorting algorithms so we will see the mo pop most popular sorting techniques that are being used uh, for the popular sorting algorithms and then finally we will end with a few review questions um, which uh, you know which you can you know solve them or uh, or or you know look back to the video go through the video again and try to uh, answer those questions so friends uh, let's get uh, started uh, with uh, introduction to sorting so let's first think of what is the sorting problem so a sorting problem essentially means ordering the items that are given based on some criteria so a simple uh, example which which we say as let, taking the example of numbers is to sort the numbers from ascending to descending so that's a simple example we could also have another example let's say sorting words that are in a dictionary uh, that could be an example of lexicographic comparison but for simplicity let's just consider we have a bunch of numbers and we want to sort them so the sorting problem uh, the input to the sorting problem is essentially a sequence of n numbers so which means certain numbers which we have a1 to an which are given to us let's say in an array and output of the algorithm or the sorting problem or the uh, solution to the sorting problem is a permutation or reordering of those n numbers in such a way that we have an ascending sequence which means a1 is less than a2 a2 is less than a3 so on an minus 1 is less than 
or less than equal to a n so so in a way we are ordering the numbers in an ascending order so here is an example let's say we are given this array of nine items and this is our input sorted data and we are then using some technique or whatever the algorithm is and we are converting it to the sorted data which is an ascending sequence of the numbers that are given so in this case 1 to 9 cool uh, so a point to note here is sorting is probably the most you know simplest or the classic introductory problem uh, in computer science so whenever we come into algorithms and data structures we first start with sorting because it is probably the intuitive and it makes sense from a real uh, real life point of view uh, as well I mean sometimes let's say we are sorting a bunch of uh, notebooks um, or a bunch of papers or let's say we might need to sort uh, you know marks or uh, order mark sheets in in the in the increasing order of uh, order of their scores and things like that so in fact um, yeah and, and the most used and discussed algorithms which are the ones also we will cover in our sorting algorithm videos are selection sort insertion sort bubble sort quick sort merge sort and heap sort and these are the most popular algorithms which we use um, uh, which we will also discuss and compare in the next few slides so cool now let's go ahead and understand first what is computational complexity now we won't go into detail or into much detail uh, into this but we'll just understand in terms of sorting like how do we calculate the computational complexity or how do we determine the complexity of a particular sorting algorithm so sorting algorithms because we have an input data which is an array and let's say the size of the array is n we normally represent our complexity in terms of the input data so which means if the input data we represent it as n so our sorting algorithm complexity will be in terms of n so it could be n n square n log n or whatever so so it is specified in terms of data input data because that is the major uh, that is the major uh, you know uh, item on which the complexity or, or, or on which the algorithms perform so basically here n is considered to be very very large so it's not a number five or six in fact it is a very large number you can think of and and in terms of that we need to you know find uh, or or uh, or uh, basically uh, determine the computational complexity and even if we code these algorithms in in a programming language and if, and if we run the time that it would take will be proportional or 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 in a way related to the input data that is the basic assumption that we take so let's say we are given this array and size is n so the way or the idea to compute the complexity of an algorithm is just to see how many comparisons we do so as and when because we need to sort the data we will have to do exchanges we might have to compare two numbers that are present at two locations and then we compare and then sometimes we may need to swap them so if we just compute the total number of comparisons in the performed in the entire algorithm so that is in fact the computational complexity and that uh, the total number of comparisons that we will um, that that we will calculate will be a, an order of or will be uh, will be related to the input size that is n so in fact if we calculate the total number of comparisons in terms of the input data which is n that is what our computational complexity is so if the definition was not clear we will see examples uh, in the next couple of slides so that will uh, help a bit in you know making the understanding much more clear 
so uh, normally when we say computational complexity since we, these are sorting algorithms there is a possibility that you know the, these algorithms may perform differently under different input conditions so let's say you know we have an average case which means we have random data that is coming in and we need to sort it another case could be a best case so which means in a case where you know which leads to very least number of comparisons uh, one example could be let's say we have uh, a sorted data which means we are already given a sorted data and we we need to use our algorithm to sort the data so in some algorithms it might need lead to very few comparisons because the data is already sorted we probably don't need to do many comparisons we probably don't need to you know exchange or swap any numbers so this may lead to a best case for the algorithm and similarly there is a worst case for the algorithm so which means the the, the input data which results in the most comparison uh, one example could be uh, let's say we have given a descending uh, the, the input data in descending order let's say 5 through 1 and we are using a sorting algorithm so so we can see that you know because we have to do a lot of swaps mm, it might uh, end up in you know causing causing the worst case scenario for an algorithm um, but remember since these algorithms have different strategies you know sorted data necessarily doesn't mean fewer comparisons and unsorted data necessarily doesn't mean worst case comparisons so it really depends on the algorithm uh, we are using and the strategy behind it so yeah sometimes we also you know say or define the number of uh, swaps that are done in an algorithm sometimes these algorithms are also compared based on the number of swaps but in this video normally we will only consider uh, the you know in terms of input data and the total number of comparisons so now let's see an example so let's see a few examples to 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 make this concept much more clear so here is the first example now in this first example so we have a a is our input array and we have uh, uh, a for loop which means we have one uh, one loop one pass through the array which means <coughs> we start with i equals to 1 and then we do something on each element of the array and then we increment i and then go to the next element and then this way we we, we cover the um, we basically uh, cover the first uh, for loop uh, which means this first for loop and if you notice since we know that size of the array a is n this would actually take n steps because i will now vary from 1 to n now similarly after this is done there is a next for loop which starts after the first for loop and in that case it also starts from 1 to a and then we do something to the data and increment j as j plus 1 so if you notice this also actually takes n steps um, so when we say uh, you know do something it means we are doing some sort of comparison or some sort of <coughs> operation uh, in terms of uh, you know calculating the computational complexity so let's see how many comparisons or how many uh, you know um, what is the total complexity so if you notice the first for loop is run n times the second one is n times so in total we will have n plus n which is 2n and in fact 2n is nothing but just order of n um, which means uh, it's linear to n so if you are confused how 2n is order of n i would suggest to go into details about how uh, you know the complexity analysis works in general the big o small o and in fact if i if i happen to make a video on that i'll make sure to link it but for now just uh, let's just uh, assume that since it's just a linear of n which means uh, in this case 2n and n is very very large so that's in terms of roughly you know order of n 
cool so let's take another example a little more complex now in this case we have uh, the first for loop which runs from 1 to n or n 1 to length of a but the second for loop is now in inside the first for loop so this is the first for loop and the second for loop is here so notice so which means for every step of the first for loop the second for loop is run so i here uh, starts from 1 to length of a which means it's n times and i is incremented i plus 1 so this runs n times and the loop that is inside uh, which is the j loop this also starts from j equal to 1 and goes to length of a which is n and it gets incremented 1 in each step so which is n but the inner loop runs for every iteration of the outer loop so which means for i equal to 1 it runs j has to be executed n times for i equal to 2 the inner loop executes another n times so uh, so if we calculate the total comparisons here we will see that it is n times n because outer loop uh, because the inner loop is n and outer loop is n and inner loop runs for every iteration of n so which gives us as n square which in fact is order of n square so which means it's quadratic in terms of n all right so i hope these two simple examples were pretty clear so let's now move on to the third example which is a little different but also similar to example one now we have the first uh, for loop which is the i loop uh, exactly same which means i equals to 1 to length of a do something and then i is incremented as i plus 1 so notice uh, this would run n times now the second for loop is a bit different second for loop runs from j equal to 1 to a but j is not incremented 1 uh, at a time so j is multiplied by its previous value with a number 2 so which means j will now ha start with 1 the next uh, value of j will be 2 the next value of j will be 4 and so on and the next will be 8 and it will continue till some value which is less than or, or till continue in terms of n so if we rewrite this a little bit so let's let's see first how many times the ga loop runs because that is pretty important for us to calculate the computational complexity so 1 2 4 8 so which means if we can rewrite it, it as 2 to the power 0 this is 2 to the power 1 4 as 2 to the power 2 8 as 2 to the power 3 and so on let's say we have 2 to the power k at some point where 2 to the power k actually is uh, you know 2 to the power k becomes n or is as close to n as possible and notice uh, because this is k times so the loop runs k times now if we uh, calculate the value of k since we know that the j loop will actually end when 2 to the power k is as close to n as possible which means 2 to the power k we can assume as n so if we solve this equation we will see that k is nothing but log of n so k is log of n uh, and when we say log of n it's log base 2 so this is the number of times the the j loop will run so if so let me write it down here so log of 2 to the power n now see uh, the difference it makes it was earlier n now it's log to n so let's see what is the total number of comparisons in this case so the total number of comparisons is just because these two loops are outside so we just add them which is n plus log n and in fact if if we see the com complexity theory because log n is much much smaller than n and we are using n as very very large log n will be very small and this will end up in having just as order n cool so now let's do the complex most complex example let's move to the most complex example which is where we have again the j loop is inside 
the f uh, f the i loop which means there is an outside loop and the outside loop is i equals to 1 and i equals to i plus 1 in every step so which means the outside loop runs n times and the inner loop is exactly the same as we saw in example 3 which is j runs from 1 to a which means j will start at 1 and end at n but j is multiplied twice which means j equals to j plus 2 we have already seen how long this takes or how many steps comparisons it needs and this we know this is log 2 to the base n now since the inside loop is outside uh, since the inside loop uh, is uh, uh, you know uh, covered by the outer loop which is n so the inside loop will run one uh, log to n log n times for every iteration of the outside loop so which means the total number of comparison will be multiplication of n and the inner loop times which is log n so this gives us the computational complexity of order of n log n all right so i hope these four examples helped a little bit to understand the complexity or at least as much uh, uh, which which we will use uh, in the in the sorting algorithms or comparison of the sorting algorithms so let's move on to the next topic which is the classification criteria which means how do we how can we classify these popular sorting algorithms so we'll go through a few of the classification criteria which is generally used so the first one which we also mm, discussed uh, just now or just before is the computational complexity so uh, how do we classify algorithms based on the computational complexity so certain algorithms perform better certain algorithms perform worse and some may perform worse under certain conditions and better under certain conditions so this is what is the worst case best case and average case behavior and in fact some algorithms are very good which means they run in order n log n time and worst which is in order n square so usually the algorithms run from order n log n to n square now the next uh, next criteria is the space complexity probably space complexity is not used as much as computational complexity but nevertheless it is much important because it tells us or it tells it us how much additional space the algorithm will use to perform the sorting operation so some of the algorithms can do sorting in place which means they probably don't need any additional data or they need uh, you know uh, or some of those algorithms may need a lot of data so when we say in place we are actually saying the least uh, space complexity which means we just need order of one extra space and additional when we say additional memory it may again range some may need n some may need n log n or some may even need n square so sometimes we classify the algorithms based on space complexity as well now third one probably another important thing is stability of the sorting so this um, this the stability of a sorting says now if there are two numbers let's say which have the same value so which means if there are two fours in our input data and there is an original order in the input data the the sorting algorithm if it maintains the same order in the output data then we say the algorithm is stable sorting algorithm is stable this becomes an important fact in some you know uh, in some of those in some of the applications and hence this is uh, uh, important classification criteria so this so let's see an example to uh, to understand it a little bit better now let's say we are given this uh, um, array which has uh, you know nine items in it and notice there are two uh, two fours i have deliberately colored the first one as yellow the second one as pink and notice the yellow four has come before which means yellow four is um, has come first and the uh, and the pink four is is second or or, pro or or later in the data now let's say we apply our sorting algorithm and we end up 
getting this you know uh, end up getting our sorted data but notice the position of the two force we have if we have the same order which means the yellow one stays ahead of the pink that means we have a stable sort so basically the ordering the original ordering of equal keys is still maintained so this indicates it's a stable sort cool then the next criteria is a recursive criteria uh, now recursive criteria is uh, is is probably you know not that important but but it is more related to how the algorithm actually operates so recursion me which means defining the problem in terms of itself so in terms of itself with smaller input data and then having a base case and uh, and applying it so so some algorithms may be recursive some may not be recursive and some may be actually partly recursive which means part of the steps of the uh, sorting algorithm is recursive now the next important item is uh, online so if the sorting algorithm can be used online or which means which can be used on streaming data so let's say i have data coming in and i do not know i, I cannot see the entire amount of data but i have data coming in you know at different points of time so uh, online sorting algorithm what it does is at any point of time it maintains a already sorted list and when the input data comes it will manage itself and then you know create the new sorted list and it keeps doing that till we receive all the data so which means without prior information of all the data i still will be able to sort using the sorting algorithm so let's see an example so let's say i have a sorted list which which i have used using my algorithm and i have 1 3 4 6 9 as five items in my uh, memory or in my current sorted list so immediately i notice there are two data items coming in which is 7 and 2 so my first step would be to you know arrange 7 inside my existing array uh, existing sorted data so which means I'll have 1 3 4 6 7 9 so 7 gets inserted between 6 and 9 and I maintain the you know sorting property of the array and then first I'll process 7 and next I'll process 2 and when I process 2 I will be able to process in such a way that I still maintain the sorted array and notice there might be more data that that is coming in after 7 or 2 I'm not sure but at any stage I have the sorted data with me so this is an important property um, of uh, or important classification criteria for sorting algorithms uh, in fact not a lot of algorithms have these um, have this property uh, but we will see that uh, later when we will compare those uh, these uh, algorithms so next property probably much popular these days because of parallel processing is whether the algorithm is serial or parallel and in fact uh, in this video or in general we, we, we normally do not consider parallel algorithms so in the context of this video we will only consider only the serial algorithms or, or the algorithms that run serially over the input data so cool so we saw six important properties of classification using which algorithms can be uh, classified so let's now move on and do a comparison of the most popular uh, algorithms that we have now uh, notice if you if the, the names of the algorithms are confusing don't worry we will uh, make sure to cover each of them in each of the algorithms will be covered detailly in a separate video in fact with a detailed example so let's look into this table and try to understand uh, what this table you know uh, uh, tries to say so on the left side in fact in the first column we have the different algorithms that we know the six uh, important algorithms selection sort insertion sort bubble sort merge sort quick sort and heap sort 
then the next sections or the next columns I have we have I have added based on the criteria that we have discussed just now uh, I have deliberately removed the criteria of serial versus parallel because I already told that uh, you know we'll only cover the serial algorithms in this um, uh, uh, in, in this video so in fact we have time complexity we have space complexity we have stableness we have online and recursive and within time complexity we have three sub parts best case worst case and average case so let's see what uh, these algorithms uh, you know fall under so notice the first part of the table which is selection insertion and bubble now these pro these are simple algorithms but the complexity falls in a range of you know n square uh, when i say n square which means average or worst case so so these these algorithms are pretty similar they actually work using a similar uh, fashion and the worst case and average case so which means for uh, for a for for a you know absolutely unsorted data let's say or uh, yeah for an absolutely unsorted data these would perform in an order of n square so which means there will be two loops one inside the other so selection insertion and bubble in fact when we come to the best case insertion and bubble do a bit better because they don't need to do a lot of comparisons they only need to do you know single pass or single uh, comparison per uh, each pass so that's why we have insertion and bubble sort as order n but selection still has order n square now let's go to the other three um, algorithms which 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 actually use complex strategies to do the sorting which is merge sort quick sort and heap sort now these algorithms in the best case and average case they perform very well which means n log n in case of best case and in average case and in fact um, merge sort and heap sort they take uh, order n log n even for the worst case except for the quick sort which takes order n square when it has uh, when it performs the worst now in this case the worst may not be an unsorted data but worst uh, will be uh, worst uh, performance is when data is in some format in which quick sort performs very bad that's probably we will see that uh, in detail in the quick sort video so so notice the time complexity so so roughly we can say that you know uh, the below three algorithms perform in n log n time the upper three algorithms perform in n square time now let's come to space complexity now space complexity means if they need additional space so notice that the upper three algorithms because uh, upper three algorithms do not need any additional space which means it's order of one the lower three algorithms in fact they they use special strategies and hence merge sort needs additional order n space to do the merging quick sort needs additional of log n for the recursive stack that it maintains but heap sort uh, still you know performs uh, or or it does not need any additional space which means it's order of one so it can be done so it performs the sorting in place let's say so now let's move to the stability of the sort now stability of the sort um, only a few sorting algorithms maintain the stability which we discussed now these three are insertion sort bubble sort and merge sort so they will make sure if the if the key values is same and they are in a particular order in the input the same order is maintained in the output and the other three algorithms they do not uh, uh, maintain the order or or they may not maintain the order rather to say 
the next item is the online sorting so online sorting there is only one algorithm that actually performs well here which is the insertion sort so which means it can keep the sorting order with streaming data so without seeing the entire data it can still maintain a uh, ordering with whatever data it has seen the next item is recursive so for recursive we have only merge sort and quick sort which are recursive algorithms so we'll see that in in those videos uh, actually why it is recursive and the recursive algorithms now and the rest all are just iterative which means we can easily explain through uh, two for loops or one inside the other or 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 in um, or or maybe you know in 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 in, in similar to that I would say okay cool so probably this was the most important part of these uh, of this video so I would definitely recommend you to come back to this position uh, in fact I'll make sure to have a bookmark in the description below um, if um, you know you can come back and look at it at any time whenever you are doing or uh, you know comparing this sorting algorithms and as and I would repeat here we will cover each of these algorithms in detail on separate videos on the channel cool all right so let's now move to the next section so which is uh, the popular sorting technique so which means the basic idea behind sorting so let's say we have some amount of input data and we want to sort it to uh, to an output data which is in ascending order so what is the general strategies these popular sorting algorithms employ so the first one is first one which is probably the simplest one to think of is just multiple passes over the data so which means we are given an array and we just go through the array you know several times and every time we go through the array we do some sort of operation and then we you know we have a part of the sorted array and then every time we go through the pass or every time we cover one pass over the data we will increase our sorted list and the unsorted list or the unsorted part of the array actually decreases and then we do when we are doing it sometimes we exchange uh, values sometimes we compare the items within the array sometimes uh, we select uh, the minimum element of the array so we do some sort of operation and then we just go through the you know uh, array multiple times sequentially and this strategy is employed by insertion sort selection sort and bubble sort because uh, you can see that you know it is it these are the simple sortest algorithms that we know so 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 let's say if we have an array here where we have some part of the sorted array uh, which is this part and then every time we go through the entire list we increase our sorted array by one and we keep doing it till you know till we have covered the entire array or till the unsorted I unsorted uh, items becomes zero or we are done with all the unsorted items so this is uh, this is what this technique is and uh, as you can guess because this is the simplest technique uh, the performance is not great we already saw the comparison of uh, insertion selection and bubble sort all are order n square uh, but uh, the best thing about these this technique is it's probably the simplest and easiest one to think all right so moving ahead the next uh, sorting technique that are used by these popular algorithms is divide and conquer so this this technique means we are given an array and then we divide the array into small parts as small as possible till whatever we can go depending on the type of the algorithm and when we are doing it we may choose to either divide the array directly into parts or we may employ some strategy let's say we will compare uh, and then we will do some exchanges and then we will divide the array so in some way we divide the array into small parts and then once we have divided the array into small parts we perform our operation 
so which means we could exchange those items within the small partition or we might have to rearrange those items inside the small partitions using using like basic comparison or exchanges and once we are done with that finally what we do is we do the merging operation so which means since we divided the array into smaller parts the, the sh there is an uh, there is an operation where we again merge those smaller parts back to get uh, our um, final array and the final array is sorted so here is how it looks like pictorically so let's say we are given this array which is which is our unsorted array and we start dividing so in this case we have eight items we divide it to first maybe four and four maybe i don't know in but we divide it and then we keep dividing it let's say into smaller parts in this case we have single item in every small partition and then we do some some operations on the divided data or we might even do some uh, you know comparison when we are dividing it and finally once we are done we rearrange the items and then we do a conquer which means we merge those smaller parts of the array or small arrays to res to basically you know get bigger parts of the array and merge those again and again repeatedly till we get our final sorted array which is this one so the division of the array is uh, is normally called the divide uh, divide phase and the merging of the uh, of the smaller parts is called as uh, conquer array and in fact different algorithms here do different uh, sort of stuff uh, in uh, in in the divide and conquer strategy so uh, so this kind of strategy is used by quick sort and merge sort uh, uh, and in fact uh, what quick sort does is quick sort employs a strategy of comparison uh, in the divide phase itself um, which means it when before dividing it makes sure that the point it is dividing is in its sorted position and merge sort is pretty naive which means during division it doesn't do anything it will keep dividing it randomly or it will keep dividing it directly into smaller parts but it does the comparison and the exchanges during the conquer which means during the merging so more on this in uh, in 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 those uh, specific videos uh, with examples we will not go there much but uh, but but just to note quick sort and merge sort use the divide and conquer strategy and because of this the performance is in fact much better we have already seen both of them are order n log n um, remember if you go back to the table we saw few minutes earlier um, yeah and uh, but then uh, the, the 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 negative of divide and conquer is it could be a bit complex to implement because now we need to make sure we are dividing the array which means we need to maintain the start and end points of the smaller array and while merging also we need to take care you know uh, of certain conditions so it might be a bit complex but then uh, it probably um, uh, makes sense because the performance is now improved it was n square in the previous technique but here it's n log n now the third kind of strategy is to use efficient data structures so in this case what we do is we are given the array so we we what we do is we use a certain efficient data structure and we insert the input data into the data structure and when we are doing it we perform uh, basically we perform the insert operation according to the data structure now one example could be inserting into a tree a binary tree let's say this is done in case of heap sort or maybe in buckets uh, buckets is used in bucket sort um, and then once we have inserted the data we then employ the the data structures uh, provided methods to rearrange the data which means the data inside the data structure we rearrange it if required and then we use the pop or, or we use the operations on the data structure 
to retrieve the items and when we are retrieving the items we are retrieving them in sorted order which means in ascending order so here is a pictorial representation of what we just discussed so we are given the input array which is uh, which looks like this and then we you know take each of the elements one by one and we insert them into some sort of efficient data structure that allows us to rearrange the data or organize the data in an efficient manner and then we use the methods provided by the data structure to retrieve the items one by one one by one to get our sorted uh, you know list or the sorted array and this strategy is used by heap sort and bucket sort we won't cover bucket sort because it falls into one of the you know not so popular algorithms uh, but we will definitely cover heap sort um, in you know in our detailed uh, uh, overview or detailed uh, discussion on the algorithms and uh, notice uh, these are uh, the, the performance of both bucket sort and heap sort or at least heap sort is order of n log n and so which means it's it's it performs better than the simpler techniques but it might be complex to implement and that is where the complexity comes in the complexity comes in in maintaining and organizing the data structures in case of heap sort that is heap so which means we have to organize the data into a heap a complete binary tree and then you know when we retrieve we have to rearrange the tree or the elements in the tree and uh, so on okay cool so these were three important uh, strategies or the techniques which are used by popular sorting algorithms so uh, that's all i had in this video uh, in fact it, it probably was a pretty long video but i i hope the purpose of the video made it sense if it um, if, if you have any comments suggestions definitely to post it on the video and and i'll make sure to attend to them if required i might create another video as well so before we end here is a list of review questions based on the items we covered in the video so um, we already discussed uh, and in fact we compared the six sorting algorithms in this video selection sort bubble sort insertion sort merge sort heap sort and quick sort we didn't go into the very detail of it like in each step how do they do but you can refer to the you know table that had its comparison and based on that uh, try to answer the following questions so the first is which sorting algorithms are the best performing ones we we discussed that already in the video uh, if you if you have missed it i would suggest to go back you know uh, and play the video again and find it out or you can also you know find that in the table the next question is which sorting algorithms need extra space for sorting so you'll have to refer to the table if you don't remember it the next question is which sorting algorithms ensure that keys with equal values are kept in original order uh, now remember there is a specific uh, uh, strategy classification strategy that is named for this so which means this is a, this is a special property of sorting um, which i won't say it now if you haven't followed please go back and you know see the table then which sorting algorithms can be used for streaming data or data that you know comes online which means data where i don't i haven't seen the entire data but i only have partial access to data and data is constantly coming uh, as you know um, one by one and then which sorting algorithms use efficient data structures for its operations just name uh, name one or two algorithms which we covered in this video all right so that's all i have here as part of the review questions i hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you haven't yet to make sure to subscribe and like our videos and post comments and any suggestions for new videos and i'll definitely try to cover them so bye bye for now see you again in the next video